I don't think the actual buyer themselves, the pro, like how they process to buy has changed. I just believe there are so many different tools to assist them in the process of deciding to buy or to change. The internet has allowed them to find things that they wouldn't have found before. Mm -hmm. The internet has allowed them to get information and compare. The internet has allowed them to see what other people think before, right? Mm -hmm. So all that information is either bringing a buyer to the table who's already biased in their decision and or allowing them to evaluate you after you've done your little dog and pony. Back in my day, buyers had eight, like relied, literally relied on the salesperson for information. Mm -hmm. And so douchey salespeople knew that and they could just, you know, say what they want to mm -hmm. say and the buyer be go oh. and now the seller is out there like everybody can see him so yeah. you, you can't expose yeah you're exposed yeah but i do agree that uh, i think the power kind of shifted as you said like it's much easier right now to find information online which can actually be fake to be honest if you look at the software industry most platforms out there are really like uh, i think pushing companies to kind of like fake these things. I do feel that the fact that we have so many options now with so many way of getting information about a specific tool, etc., that sometimes people feel overwhelmed. Yeah. And that we are going back because of all this information to relationship mm -hmm. with sales rep. Mm -hmm. And knowing, as you said, that people are more exposed, I think it increases the trust you might have to like a, a sales rep or someone like giving you information. Mm -hmm. I've seen a massive pivot towards product-led growth motions. How on earth would you want me to buy a $100,000 car or a wardrobe worth $75,000 and asking me never to try it on and just getting the store representative to describe it to me. So all these companies are coming to deck and saying, shit, 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 shit. Like what's our product-led growth motion? We need to give them some kind of sample size. And like, I think why the salespeople are struggling to adapt is they're like, well, what do I do now? Now I can't describe my product. Now I'm like, <laughs> Now this person is beforehand going in and seeing the dog and pony show beforehand. And I hope that it's forcing sellers into, unless you know how to diagnose, you're of no use anymore. Buyers are terrible buyers. And this product-led growth is, I think you got a good point that, that, that these buyers are trying to buy without working with a salesperson. But the yeah. truth of the matter is that's not going to help them. And to the extent that they continue to try to buy anything, software or anything, without some level of expertise, it's only going to reduce the return on investment to the buyers. They don't really know how to implement it in its full capacity. They're not engaged, so no one's leading them in a direction. We just don't buy well. Do you feel like it's the time for sales rep to be called differently, so they act differently. We talked about this yesterday, right? Shakespeare, a rose by any other name <laughs> still smells as sweet. An SDR and salesperson by any other name still stinks, right? <laughs> to me, the answer is what I wrote in Gap Selling. It's literally, you need to learn how to diagnose, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You need to do discoveries that help buyers diagnose the problems. And it's not easy, but you need to actually genuinely try to understand what is going on today, what are the root problems, what are the impacts, what are the root causes, which like what's totally going on, diagnose the whole environment mm -hmm. so that you can literally say, okay, this is the key. Based on what you told me, G, and what you're trying to accomplish, what I hear is going on, my recommendation is this for these reasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it becomes a custom recommendation. Yeah. Salespeople cannot do that. They cannot do that 99%. So what they do is, to your point, they say, well, hey, check out my mic. It's got it's adjustable. It's got this and it's got that. Come on, bye, 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 bye. Right? And they have no idea why the person would need it, what they're trying to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So no, the answer to your question is we don't need to change the name, we need to change the behaviors mm. and expectations. It is because the objectives that we give to salespeople in general are not always aligned with you know, like the, the expectations of the buyer or like at least doing a good discovery and understanding their pain points to help them solve it. I don't think the objectives we have as salespeople are jacked up. Like I agree that look, salespeople, have, that's their job. You gotta sell shit, Yeah, you right? gotta sell. So I don't have any problem with quotas and all like those objectives and driving money. Mm -hmm. What I have an issue with is how they push the way sales. they're getting there. Yes, yeah. how they sales people to they're get there, there correctly. right? And what they evaluate in the CRM. Salespeople are glorified order takers across the board because they're unable to actually deliver sales value to the buyer. That's why product-led growth is flushing out to market. It's because there's been a, an acceptance across the market of that salespeople don't do that. Yeah. So the 87% of people who don't want a salesperson involved, I would guess it's based on their experience. They haven't come across a salesperson who has been able to do that. So they're like, if I'm gonna self-diagnose anyway, I might as well just speed this up and do it in the comfort of my yes, own home without yes, pressure. Yes. I just think that you could do a demo video that's generic. If you have a salespeople hitting on the same five features, might as well speed it up and not get the pressure. For us, 
It really depends on the persona. So we have free trial and self onboarding for people who are just, you know, willing to test it, who actually don't want to talk to any sales rep. Lots of agencies who already know how to use their stuff. They will fucking hate having to talk to a sales rep that would be not like a professional, not a good consultant, not giving them like any tips or anything and just wait their, waste their time. However, we do have people who like that. Give them both. And we, so we have, we have both. The modern buyer is about speed. Once they self-diagnose the problem and they realize they have a problem and they want to talk to you, like it is speed to lead, speed to lead, speed to lead of like, how quickly can I, how many hurdles can I remove, you know, for this person? They will pay top dollar for an outcome. Yeah, because- I want, so I, you can quantify the value that I, I want come. booked meetings. I want, I you know, yada, yada, that. yada. So yeah. par part of the outcome from my view is not just educating them on your product, but how to use the product. So like I get a software like Lemless and I'm like, what's the playbook? And so I see y'all constantly in your community being like, here's five templates. Here are the response rates here. Are, like, here's how to use the tool before you use the tool. You don't even have to buy the tool. Mm. And we're French. So we're not even going to mention you buying the tool. <laughs> getting an outcome isn't just about getting the tool. No. Right? Never. So how do I educate them? What are the other things that would help them get to the outcome? And how can I educate them on that along the way as a lead generation strategy? Take them on the journey. The reason why it's working is because we don't care if they use us totally. or not. To be honest, like in our community, I know we have like a sales loft users, outreach users, etc. But for me, it's fine. You know, like if I'm delivering value, if I'm like helping them to create like the the best sequences, the best cadences or whatever, no matter the tool that they're using, I'm fine with it, you know, because it's more important that the industry change the words like personalization, building relationships. Sometimes, you know, like uh, down the line, if people change company and you've brought them tons of value, mm -hmm. you will become the best option. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's mm -hmm. that's really simple. And it's a long term game. To me, attribution like doesn't make sense. You spending your money on the wrong thing. Focus on helping people, focus on delivering value, focus on like the end results or the outcome come for your users and first like this is the only focus and i repeat to my marketing team you know when i see them looking on uh, how many like specific keywords people are searching you, like, for like computer out of the wall yeah. you, like, and I'm, like i don't give a fuck that your article yeah. ranks well for xyz like how many people did share it how many people did mm -hmm. write you like uh, a message to say oh you know what you've changed my life oh you know like this is the actual metrics you should look for. But people don't look at this. Like it's uh, because everyone right now think that being data driven is the only path to success. Mm -hmm. While actually like business is pretty simple. Help someone solve a problem. Yeah. They will give you money for it. Totally. It's easy. This is the real salesperson, a field expert who is after helping you, who has not only the confidence or like the integrity, but is desirous of saying no to you when it won't help your outcome because they know that you'll look back at them. For me, it's like, it doesn't matter how long you've spent at a company. What matters is what expertise did you get you from develop, it? Right. So if you're in an industry where you need an expertise, whenever you want to hire someone new and that person has been in the industry for like, I don't know, five years, mm -hmm. you should ask them questions related to the industry. Totally. And test that. I also do feel that people in general have a lot of adaptability and that you can learn an industry in like two to three months, depending how curious you are. Sure. You can't be a consultant unless you know something about, yeah. you have some level of expertise on the buyer. You just can't know enough about every single business you sell to. And to my opinion, it's less who you're selling to in the business you're selling. So if I'm selling to fintech. I don't care that it's the CFO. What I need to understand is finance, right? Right. And so here's where everybody misses the boat. So I want someone who understands my space and my product, but I can teach that. Right. But I want someone also who understands the space they're selling into, but I can teach that as well. Where it comes together, and this is why this pick, come back to the pick, there's only three or four or five or six business problems any business solves. Right now, you can have conglomerates, right? Like P&G. Well, okay, they've got a million products. So, of course, but if I go to actually that product, the Dove Soap, there's only one or two or three business problems that Dove Soap solves. And then if I go over to Palm Olive or I go to fucking toothpaste, different problems. But the point being is by company and or product, there's only a handset. And because they don't know those, they don't know how to make the bridge. So when I find out with the three or four problems that Lemless solves, business problems, it doesn't matter if I'm talking to a CFO, CEO, a director of sales, if I'm talking to someone in marketing, it doesn't matter. I just have to understand how are these problems affecting you as a marketer versus you as a director of sales versus you as a CRO versus you as a CEO. That is a much easier bridge to cross. But because the people are in tune with that, they don't know how to teach them on that and everything goes haywire.